We're going to go over the pivot positions, the pivots, the pivot rows, and the pivot columns of a matrix, what they are and how to find them. The pivot positions of a matrix are the positions of the leading ones in the matrix's row echelon or reduced row echelon form. Now, if we have a non-zero entry, in one of those positions, so it doesn't have to be a one, if it's just a non-zero entry in one of those positions, that's called a pivot. Let's look at this matrix here, for example. By the definition I'm using, this matrix is not in row echelon form because not all of the leading entries are ones. However, by some definitions, this would still be considered row echelon form. Regardless, these leading entries are the pivot positions because we see we've got our leading ones here. And if we finish putting this in row echelon form, the only difference is that the eight would turn into a one and the five would turn into five eights. So these are the positions of those leading ones. Thus, they are the pivot positions. One pivot position is row one, column one. Another pivot position is row two, column two. And the final pivot position is row three, column three. The pivots of this matrix are the non-zero entries that are in those pivot positions. So the pivots are one, one, and eight. Then, very simply, the columns that contain the leading ones in a matrix's row echelon or reduced row echelon forms are the pivot columns. The pivot columns are the columns that contain the pivot positions. Similarly, the rows containing the leading ones are the pivot rows. So looking back at this matrix, we saw that 1, 1, and 8 were the pivots. Those are in the pivot positions. So the pivot rows are row 1, row 2, and row 3. They're all pivot rows in this case. The pivot columns are column 1, Again, that's because it's a column containing a pivot position. Column two, because it contains a pivot position. And column three, because it contains a pivot position. Those are the pivot rows and the pivot columns. Here's another matrix for example. What are the pivot positions of this matrix? Well, right now it's not quite in row echelon form, but we could put it in row echelon form by just cutting all of these numbers in row two in half. So clearly we can see that the pivot positions, the positions of those leading ones in row echelon form would be row row one, column one, row two, column two, and row three, column three. Those are the pivot positions. The rows, rows one, two, and three, that contain those positions are the pivot rows. The columns containing those positions, columns one, two, and three, are the pivot columns. The pivots themselves are the entries in these pivot positions, one, two, and one. So to find all this pivot stuff for a matrix, you're going to need to put it in reduced or at least normal row echelon form. Let's quickly go through that process. Here is a matrix. It's not in row echelon form. Let's transform it to row echelon form by performing elementary row operations so we can identify the pivot positions. Here is the whole sequence of operations. I assume you're comfortable with elementary row operations, so I'll just walk you through this very quickly. First, we subtract row 1 from row 3, then we swap rows 1 and row 3. Three. Then from row three, we take away two copies of row one, and then we multiply row two by negative half. At this point, we're looking to turn this negative five into a zero, so we'll add five copies of row two to row three. That makes this a zero now, and the negative one is now 71.5. And then finally, we multiply row three by one over 71.5 to turn that into a one. And now this is in row echelon form. It's not in reduced row echelon form since these columns with the ones don't contain zeros elsewhere, but standard row echelon form is enough to identify the pivots. The pivots are the leading ones in this row echelon form. So our pivot positions are row one, column one, row two, column two, and row three, column three. The pivots themselves are just one, one, and one in this case. We could also look back at the original matrix and say that two, negative two, and five are the pivots of the matrix because those are the non-zero entries that are in its pivot positions. So keep in mind, although we need to transform this matrix into row echelon form to be sure of its pivots and pivot positions and so on, they are pivots and pivot positions of the original matrix. The pivots of this matrix are the non-zero entries in the pivot positions. By reducing it to row echelon form, we found that these are the pivot positions, and so the pivots of this matrix are two, negative two, and 
5. Just for an example with a slightly different feel, consider this matrix C from Howard Anton's Elementary Linear Algebra text. It's already in row echelon form, so we can quickly identify that the pivot columns, say, are columns 1, 3, and 4, because these are the columns containing the leading ones. Column 2 is not a pivot column because it doesn't contain a pivot position. Similarly, row 4 is not a pivot row because it doesn't contain a pivot position. Here's the definitions of all the pivot vocab one more time. I hope you found this a useful lesson. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Check out my linear algebra playlist in the description. Thanks for watching.